The morning markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tammy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN. Thanks so much for starting your trading day with TFNN and with me for the morning market kickoff, 9.06 a.m. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, folks, and we got markets slightly in the red to kick things off. You're looking at an S&P negative by just five points right now. 42.76, all things considered, right near all-time highs made yesterday, 42.91. NASDAQ 100, look at the acceleration we got going on. You take a look at the NASDAQ 100, folks. May 19th, you were trading under 13,000. How about adding about 1,600 points? You're talking about a 12% pop in the NASDAQ 100 just over about the last six weeks. Up would we go, 14,552. We make an all-time high last night in the futures, 14,598. The Dow, about 900 points off the all-time highs right now. The Dow trading 34,107, 35,000 on the dot. All-time high, May 10th in the futures. And we got the Russell right now, negative by about nine points. You see the Russell, right? Just chopping around basically in this area of about 2,300. All-time highs in the Russell, you got to go back to March 15th, 2366. Bitcoin, pulling back a bit this morning uh, on the chart. Nothing too dramatic. Bitcoin's been jumping around between about 30,000 and 40,000 since really that day of escalation began on May 19th. Remarkable when you look back that we make a high April 14th, two and a half months ago. Time is amazing, folks, that we have two and a half months ago. Coinbase goes public. I remember that day. Uh, let's take a look at Coinbase as they are trading with cryptos, as would make sense. You got Coinbase back above the reference price. I believe 250 was that reference price. Arbitrary number that Coinbase goes public at to give themselves a little bit of a boost. Uh, you were under that level since about May 14th, back above 250. 254.90 uh, was the close. Is that yesterday? Yes, it was. That was a close yesterday. So ironically, with Bitcoin trading a little bit lower, you're actually going to open under that level this morning at 248. We jump around to commodities, crude catching a little bit of a bid, especially from those lows we had yesterday. Made it below $72 early yesterday. And just like that, we were just back above $74, folks. You're up more than a percent right now, up 77 cents in the price of crude. We got gold contract continuing to struggle. We're down about six dollars at 1757. You make a low of 1750 yesterday, and we jump to notes and bonds as we got a little bit of higher price and lower yield. You're talking about a yield right now under 1.5 percent. You get the 10 year positive by three ticks at 132.11. You get the 30 year positive by 13 ticks at 160.16. And as I talked about to kick off the program, you get the VIX spiking to 1731 as the market accelerated a little bit lower overnight. Still get the VIX hit a little bit elevated this morning at 1679. Uh, we came into yesterday's action in the VIX at about 1565. Now, here's what's interesting, folks, right? Taking a look at the VIX, quite the escalation. When you look at we were at about 1550 to start the trading day yesterday. Now, if you correlate that to where we are in the markets, okay, we're basically right where we were in the S&P yesterday. All right, now we have some volatility, and this is the reason why you got that escalation in the VIX, okay? You trade lower from 42.86. You drop 15 points in the span of about an hour between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. Eastern time. That puts a little bit of volatility premium in the S&P. So that's the reason why you got an elevated level. But anytime you see a VIX that is rising with a market that is not um, pulling back, as in look where we are, folks, okay? You come into the open yesterday, right at basically where we were in the S&P, sometimes the VIX leads the market, folks, sometimes, right? When we were opening with the S&P yesterday, you had the VIX at around 1560. Well, you have the S&P trading at the same exact price level, give or take, okay? I know it's not to the decimal, but pretty much the S&P is right where we were at the open yesterday. And meanwhile, the VIX is telling you that the market is demanding more volatility premium because they see more risk in this market they do today than they did yesterday at the same exact price. So pay attention to that as we come into the open uh, in about 19 minutes from right now. All right, fundamental news. We got private payrolls, uh, especially interesting in light of uh, a little bit of revision going on for the month of May downward and especially interesting because guess what? We get non-farm payrolls on Friday, the big number that the market will be waiting for ahead of the July 4th long weekend. Strong numbers here on the payrolls increasing by 692,000 for the month of June. Market was looking for about 550. 
All right. Uh, estimate fell short of May's 886,000. Now, the interesting thing here, they don't put it up in the bullet points, is that there was quite a revision. Okay, May count was revised down sharply from the initial reported 978,000. So you drop it from 978 to 886. All right, what's that? About 90,000 jobs, give or take, 91,000 jobs, 92,000 jobs uh, that they cut from there. So, yes, you beat by 142,000 in the month of June. Is that right? Yes, it is for the month of June, even though we're still in in June. Uh, you beat by about 142,000 in June, but you shave off about 92,000 for the month of May revision. Uh, hospitality would make sense. The biggest area in terms of hiring gains, 332,000 uh, in leisure and hospitality. That includes bars, restaurants, hotels, other related businesses. Of course, that was the hardest hit. Education and health services also had strong gains, 123,000. Trade, transportation, utility, 62,000. And professional and business services, 53,000. Uh, on the goods producing side, construction payrolls increased 47, manufacturing up 19, services provided the bulk of the job gains 624,000 services, right? Goods producers added just 68,000. You see the difference there, remarkable um, in, in, in a big way. Job gains were evenly spread across industry size, companies with more than 500 workers adding 240,000. The 500 to 50 to 500 workers adding 236 and small firms adding 215. Pretty cool to see there that the small businesses, medium sized and the larger ones all contributing to the increase. Uh, yeah, so in terms of what they'll be looking for for Friday, economists surveyed by the Dow Jones expect a total payroll increase of 706,000 compared to May's 559. The unemployment rate for Friday morning, we'll be getting that number at 830 in the morning Friday. Expected to drop to 5.6 from 5.8. However, the ADP and Labor Department counts often vary widely. Quite a little disclaimer there. Nonetheless, strong numbers uh, in a big way. You're talking about 600,000 jobs added, uh, even if you take off the revision that we had in terms of the month of May. But we get that data at 8.30, and the market marches on. And just to put it in perspective here, now the markets are creeping a little lower. As we talked about, maybe more people are paying attention to the reason why the VIX is elevated as the S&P is basically within about a stone's throw from all-time highs. Uh, we get the VIX at, excuse me, S&P is trading at about 42.75. But just to see the volatility, folks, there's no volatility at all on that jobs number. All right? None. Like literally zero. Can't even find it. There's your 830 bar. These are 15-minute bars. That's the smallest bar on the chart I got at 830 when that news actually came out. Uh, at 8.30 this morning for the number in terms of private payrolls. What else we got going on? We got some earnings, Bed Bath & Beyond, out with their numbers. Now, what's interesting here is options do not trade overnight, folks, okay? So when you're pulling up any of the, you know, option chains, you're seeing pricing in here. Um, for instance, you just go to the July 2nd ones, which expire Friday, right? These are prices predicated on the close yesterday. They will all begin updating at 930 when the market's open. But what is cool is you can go back before the market opens. But... Golden ratios give shape to everything in our world. Represented in the Fibonacci sequence, these special numbers define the patterns that make up our universe. Not even markets can escape the omnipotence of these ratios. Larry Pesavento is a 45-year market veteran who has published nearly a dozen books on the powerful patterns we find in nature and their relationships with the ever-elusive markets. Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, will teach you to harness the power of these natural golden ratios in order to create successful trades. Fibonacci 24-7 is designed to teach the tools you need to identify and act on these undeniable and reoccurring patterns. Sign up for Larry's newsletter, Fibonacci 24-7, and you will also receive free access to his trading webinar, Trading Strong, Trending Markets. Try out Larry's newsletter risk-free. All of TFNN's newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. 
Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE, and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245 and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps down about six points this morning, coming into the opening bell, 11 minutes away from that opening bell. We get the NASDAQ tech stocks barely in the red right now, negative by about seven points, 14,555. The Dow lagging a bit, off about two-tenths percent, 80 points in the red right now. We get the Russell negative by 10 points, about four-tenths percent lagging as well. Uh, jumping back to Bed Bath & Beyond. So we're about 50 cents, and this is where, folks, you got to understand implied volatility, right? If you're... Um, you know, looking for any type of move in this equity, just the point being, even if you're looking for the highest high we got here, right, which you spiked up about 6% on their numbers, um, and I'll pull them up in a moment, but you spike up to about 32.29 from a close yesterday, about 30, all right, and at the money, call yesterday was going for just about two dollars two dollars fifteen cents as i mentioned you see all the pricing in here okay we closed under thirty dollars so technically uh, a thirty dollar call you're going to be slightly out of the money as of yesterday's close right nine pennies out of the money for a thirty dollar call you're still paying about two dollars and twelve cents right so that's going to push your break even to thirty two twelve for a call that's a break even folks that's not making money you got to make two dollars plus that's a lot of volatility rightfully so priced into bed bath and beyond with the type of moves that it has with the type of uh you know reddit acceleration in terms of what you may get in this morning we're only about 50 cents from that level on bed bath and beyond at about 30 dollars and 60 pennies all right folks let's jump over to our man kevin hinks every trading day 11 a.m eastern time fast market on the td ameritrade network kevin hinks alex coffee and the team breaking down the market action, talking about what's happening, setting up hypothetical trades, folks, for example, walking you through how to manage those trades, rolling them, closing them out. Uh, we got some private payrolls numbers this morning. We got some non-farm payrolls numbers on Friday. Uh, Kevin Hinks, happy Wednesday, man. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. How are you? Uh, ADP data coming out this morning, showing a pretty good solid number, Tom. I mean, 692,000 jobs. That's... Uh, you know, I wish it was, you know, more highly correlated to the actual number we're getting on Friday, but it doesn't always seem to be correlated for some reason. I don't know why. It's one of the great mysteries. But, you know, 692,000, Tommy, it's interesting. Service sector, 624,000. Good sector, 68,000. And then it, it's interesting. Small companies, 1 to 49 employees, 215,000 jobs. Mid-sized, 50 to 499 employees, 236, and large, 500 or more, 240,000 jobs. So very balanced in terms of the size of the company. So 332,000 leisure and hospitality jobs. Remember, that's all private sector jobs. So uh, 
pretty good solid number here from ADP, but as you know, that doesn't mean much, it seems, when it comes to Friday's number, Tommy. Yeah, because I think last uh, last month, and there was a downward revision, right, for the month of May. I think they took off almost about 100,000 um, jobs for the month of May. But to, to your point, uh, May's number was almost 100, uh, excuse me, was almost a million jobs added on the private payrolls number and not quite when we got the non-farm payroll number. But, yeah, pretty cool to see, I just think, from a perspective of, of a healthy economy that you got small businesses, intermediate, medium-sized businesses, and the big dogs. We all know that the big companies are going to, have an easier time, at least my own perception, of bringing people back, right? But it's nice to see those smaller companies in the same way hiring, medium companies in the same way hiring as well. Uh, we got a VIX, Kevin. I was talking about this morning, a little bit elevated. We got some negative action last night at about 4 a.m. I say little bit. I mean, what we talk about, it's about 10 points in the S&P. Um, we traded lower at about 4 a.m., but we saw a spike. We're sitting at about 17 this morning. And I was talking about, Kevin, you know, we're sitting at 17. Yesterday, we opened the trading day uh, a full point lower on the VIX at about 1560 give or take and we're opening kind of right at a similar level in terms of where we were yesterday in the S&P maybe a few points below it but uh, do you ever look at Kevin when you see like you know I have an elevated VIX right and you did have that drop off in the overnight session so I understand there's a little bit of negative action in the market you got all the indices in the red right now but sometimes do you ever look at the VIX maybe leading some of these markets I'm always intrigued when I see a VIX getting a little bit of a bid and then, you know, compared to yesterday, man, we're basically sitting at kind of the same price level of 42.76. We're within 15 points of all-time highs right now in the S&P. Yeah, you know, Tommy, we look at a lot of things. And not only do we look at the VIX, Tommy, for information, but how about the SKU? The SKU we look at all, all the time as well. And what is SKU? SKU is the relationship between the implied volatility of the puts and the implied volatility of the calls. And I'm telling you, that number is at a three-year high in terms of – and what does that mean for your viewers? It means that no matter what the markets are doing, overall option order flow is buying puts and selling calls. And that is making the overall implied volatility of those two skew. And it's at one of its highest levels in the last three years right now at a you know so we're re i really watch that the skew as well as the vix for information about order flow you know when i used to stand on the floor uh tommy an order would come in the pit and it was identified by a number for the firm and we we knew what the order flow was we knew who was doing it well you can't do that now right you can't the the it's pretty much um hidden by online, uh, you know, online trading and screen trading. So we don't know who's doing the order flow, but we still can judge and measure the order flow in the direction. And the skew right now is telling us that there's put buyers and call sellers in this market, Tommy. I'm going to inject some own personal bias here, but that strategy makes sense to me in terms of a risk-reward ratio. Yep. It makes sense in terms of the dramatic run-up we've had. I mean, it's remarkable, Kevin, that you go back to the run that it had when we start getting the, the vaccine efficacy, and I'm going back. It's crazy. Time is crazy. Seven months now. But you're a solid 1,000 points above where you're trading at in the uh, excuse me in the S&P from that price level, let alone where we just came from. Whether you go back May 12th, we're trading at about 4,000. We're trading at 4,275. So, you know, I see a lot of risk. I'm injecting and my own personal bias here, folks. But, you know, when you see the possibility for a rapid acceleration upwards after the run we've just had versus maybe a little bit of an acceleration downward, we got a little bit of anxiety in terms of inflation. Um, but interesting when you see the actual data that backs it up, um, it makes sense, man. It makes sense in my own head. At and least. all you have to do, Tommy, on the Thinkorswim platform, type in SKU, and it'll give you the CBOE SKU index. And that measures that, and it gives you the data right there, and you can chart it for you know as long as you want and see the levels. Are they I high or is it low? Just that quick, folks. We got it up there. We love it. And we're, uh, yeah, we see the highs, man. And talk about a spike yesterday on that skew. My goodness, CBOE skew. See that, folks? I learned something new just even talking to Kevin every single day. <laughs> Check out the program for sure. That's I didn't know it, Kevin. I, I know about skew, man, and that makes sense in my own head. Um, but great to see the actual data um, in front of us on a chart visually. Always nice.
So we got uh, Bed Bath & Beyond earnings today. Interesting that kind of the volatility yep. priced into that equity. No, it's only about 50, 60 cents a bit away from where they're at, but pretty decent numbers for them. Uh, we're wrapping up earnings season, of course, but we got the non-farm payroll coming up on Friday. What are you guys going to be discussing coming up on the show coming up at 11 o'clock today, Kevin? Today, we'll definitely be looking at the chips. With Micron coming out after the bell today, we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at the chip sector uh, for anything that, that we see there. So a lot of discussion today on chips and Micron, Tommy. Nice. And Micron, talk about uh, all of these chips, man. It is remarkable, Kevin, in terms of we all know that it's going to be the uh, the Internet of things, right? Everything's going to be connected to the Internet from soon, folks. Um, and these chips are really accelerating. But remarkable, the acceleration they've had over about the last year. You see Micron trading at 83. We were at $40 and change, folks, one year ago. Kevin, man, we appreciate the education every day. We look forward to the program coming up at 11 o'clock today. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. You too, Kevin. Take care, man. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an Apex Predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors Tom O'Brien has just published his 1,000th gold report. It's amazing to think that Tom has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 20 years. To celebrate the 1,000th issue of Tom O'Brien's gold report, we've just launched a Tiger Dollar sale, which runs for two weeks only through July 4th weekend. We've doubled all the Tiger Dollar bonuses, where you can now get up to a 40% bonus on your purchase. But that's not all. Inflation is here, and the price of the gold report is going up after July 4th. Right now, you can lock in the Gold Report at the current pricing of $97 a month for as long as you remain a subscriber. This deal won't come around again. Get your Tiger Dollars today and apply them to the Gold Report before the price goes up on July 5th. Tiger Dollars never expire and are good for any TFNN newsletter or service as a great way to add savings. Head on over to the front page of TFNN.com for all the details and help us celebrate Tom O'Brien's 1000th Gold Report. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and just like that, we're trading higher. We got tech stocks in the green. NASDAQ 100 positive by two points right now. Call it in the red. We're jumping around. S&P is negative by just one point. The Dow negative by four, and the Russell negative by two. All the markets catching a little bit of a bid on the opening bell. 
Give it a moment, folks. We'll see where we end up. Uh, let's jump over to crude. Crude pulling back in the last few minutes, really, from about 8.30 this morning. You trade from 74 to 73.47. We were below 72 at one point yesterday, though. So still catching a little bit of a bid from those lows. You got the gold contract down about $6 at 17.57. Uh, we'll be talking to Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com on the next segment. Coming up in about 10 minutes. Always a great, seg great segment going over the, the Forex market, folks, across the whole world. I encourage you to check it out. We'll be back at 40 past with Teddy. Great segment coming up uh all right jumping around to other equities we got making moves so where are we stocks making moves here we go so we talked about bed bath and beyond virgin galactic uh dropping a little bit bank of america securities double downgrade double downgrade not what you want to hear uh underperformed from a buy recent spike in the stock after the company received approval to carry passengers into space said the premium earned by the galactic's leading position is already reflected in the price i mean it's just kind of makes sense right in terms of so you got it down about four percent on that run i mean look look at the acceleration you got folks you go from 40 to 62 dollars almost and just like that we're back to 45 but guess what not surprising folks okay when you go from 62 dollars down to 15 you make it almost back up to 60 dollars. you better be aware that you're dealing with some highly volatile situation because this company is predicated on multiples in the future um and those can vary greatly from time to time and we see virgin galactic down about 4.2 percent as the space frontier becomes a reality uh remarkable action in terms of the, the volatility across the board what else we got going on? A little bit light in terms of where we are. So we got Constellation out with their numbers. 233 a share, matching forecast, revenue slightly above estimates. Constellation, the maker of Corona Beer, STZs, hey, trading higher by about 2.5%. Also a huge investor in cannabis growth. Cannabis sector, uh, they got Corona, they got Kim Crawford Wines, um, I think Mondelez Beer in there as well. And this thing's just been on a rocket ship to the upside, folks. Look at this acceleration. We'll back it all the way up to a three-year weekly to get the full COVID collapse down from 207 to 104. And man, it's been a rocket ship and we're gonna be pushing right near all-time highs, 244.75. We'll put it back on a daily so you can see that volatility. And this thing's really been chopping around, right? Between about 220 and 240, it really got into this range. If you back it up on the earnings that came in January, you pop higher. And we're going to be pushing those all-time highs. Constellation uh, up about 2.5% on their numbers this morning. General Mills out with their numbers as well. Beat analysts by six cents a share. Quarterly earnings, 91 cents a share. Revenue above estimates as well. Organic sales, sales, organic sales falling by 6% from a year ago, however, a reflection of the surge in at-home demand as the pandemic was taking hold. You know, yearly comps are just not something that entertains my uh, attention at this point, folks, in terms of they're just almost meaningless because last year was such an anomaly. You got General Mills up about nine tenths percent. We'll put it on a 15 minute. Talk about charging higher on their numbers, right? Whatever they got going on in the conference call at nine o'clock, the market is liking it. We trade from $59 and look at this pop we're getting on the open on General Mills up about 1.2% to $60.70. Let's check in on the meme stock of the day, Bed Bath & Beyond. That's right. Give it a little time, folks. We're up 6.2%. Now, as I mentioned, though, if you're buying an at-the-money call, folks, all right, and this is where you got to understand volatility premium. I know we have a lot of smart, um, educated, brilliant traders that listen to TFNN out there and investors, okay? And I know you understand it, but if you're new to the options market, okay, and you see this type of a pop, you have to remember, folks, that this is barely a break-even trade if you were buying an at-the-money call or uh, well, call. All right. You're buying at the money put, you're obviously going to lose when it trades higher. If you want to buy both sides of the volatility, you needed about a $4 pop. Now, I went over the numbers at the beginning of the show before the market opened. All right. This closed yesterday at $29.91. If you wanted to buy a $30 call, so you'd be nine cents out of the money, you were going to pay more than $2. So you needed about $2.15, $2.20 to the upside. I mean, folks, you needed a 7% pop to the upside just to break even on an earnings event where theoretically 50% of the time, right away, it's gonna go down, all right? You're coming into an earnings event. Sometimes it's gonna trade higher, sometimes it's gonna trade lower. In theory, 50% of the time, should trade higher, should trade lower. Now, that's in theory. Uh, good companies will beat more often than they will disappoint, okay? But right away, you're gonna lose that trade if you're buying an at-the-money call 50% of the time, all right? And then, 
on the occasions that it does trade in your direction, you got to get a pop of more than 7% just to break even. And you see the move we're getting right now, you might get it, all right? Now, the other disclaimer is, if you're the person selling somebody a call in a meme stock like Bed Bath & Beyond or AMC or GameStop, you better be collect collecting some premium to give the people a defined risk trade where you're the person defining their risk, right? You're the person giving somebody the right to buy that stock at 30 um, with a defined loss. And meanwhile, they get all the acceleration to the upside and you have to be responsible for it. Um, so it makes sense of volatility, but something to keep in mind. And we got Bed Bath & Beyond basically up right with the move was in terms of the call to the upside. But if you're talking about both ways, it had a $4 move in either direction. So you would have had to been right on the direction of the move and you just would have broken even. Just uh, remarkable when you look at the type of volatility that's priced into some of these equities. Let's take a look at some of the other meme stocks this morning as we take a look. Maybe they're taking their AMC money and funneling it into Bed Bath & Beyond. We got AMC down about 1.6% today, and the original gangsta GameStop down 1.7% today at 208. Really remarkable where these stocks ended up settling, right? If you said that GameStop, after all the hysteria, was going to be chopping it around $200 after it started the year off at $20 after last year, it was at $2 after you were trading at a price point of $5 in August. I think the market would have said you were bananas, folks. But sometimes things happen that are outside of the normal risk. And that is why defined risk is so essential in any strategy, because things can happen, folks, that you never foresee. We've seen it all in the last year with COVID. Nobody would have thought that the S&P could ever reach a level that it reached of what was it? 2174 in the span of this is a weekly, folks. It took one, two, three, four weeks. You know, the fifth week is when you got the bounce in the low, but it took four weeks to go from 3,400 to 2,200. Now, hopefully we never see an event like this in our lifetimes again. Um, but man, unforeseeable situations, folks, are always on the horizon, impossible. All right, if the, there's an expression I like to keep in my mind. If the probability is greater than zero, okay, you better realize it can happen. All right. And that's in life, folks. All right. People see these small probabilities and they dismiss them, even though, you know, it's a 5% chance, it's a 1% chance, it's a one tenth of a percent chance. Well, folks, you run a one tenth of a percent chance enough times, you only got to run it a thousand times until basically the odds are that you're going to have that situation come up. And if you're trading every single day and you think that you're risking a one tenth percent chance of an event occurring, okay, you only gotta be trading about three years until you can make the estimation that you expect that event will become true. Well, two or three years is not the end of the world, folks, and that's saying that a one in a thousand event occurs during your trading event. So keep that in mind. If a probability is greater than zero of occurring, you better make sure that you are prepared for that event because we've seen some of the short sellers, that's what started this whole run in GameStop, they had a probability greater than zero that that stock could run up higher and almost bankrupt the fund. And what did they do? They said, we're just going to ignore that risk because it's so low. And what happened? That risk came true, and a lot of those funds had to liquidate. Stay tuned, folks. We're going to be talking Forex with our man Teddy Kegstat when we come right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. And just like that, we got markets in the positive with the S&Ps up by about two points right now, trading at 42.83. Jumping around to some of the FANG stocks real quick, we got Amazon catching a little bit of a bid, up about a quarter percent right now, trading at 34.57. Microsoft shares down four tenths of percent, trading at 270. Jumping over to Google, Google shares pulling back a little bit as well, down about half a percent, trading at 25.06. How about Facebook pulling back from some of the gains it had earlier this week with antitrust? Uh, with their cases being dismissed up to 358 on Monday, giving back some of the gains about a half a percent right now. You get Facebook trading at 350 on the dot, jumping around to some of the other social media. Twitter shares down about a half a percent. It was interesting to see how the Facebook story trades out in terms of the FTC having 30 days to refile. Uh, the judge not having it that they're a monopoly. Not hard, not, excuse me, hard, not easy, I should say, to prove a company is a monopoly and it should be that way folks if you're going to come after a company all right and you're going to chop them up all right government's going to come in and chop up a company and listen i'm all for some regulations okay um we need them but the bar should be high when you come into a private business and chop it up and the judge was saying you haven't even done it you haven't given me the data that we need in terms of the market share etc it's going to be a high bar as it should be for the ftc to come after them and we'll see how that shakes out all right, folks, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Every trading day, you can reach Teddy at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour talking forex. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Oh, do we got him? I can't hear him. Yeah, I can hear there you. There we go. I got you. you morning, got Teddy. Me? Okay. Good to see you guys again. You too, man. How's, uh, how's, how's the Wednesday morning treating you so far? Um, well, it's pretty interesting. We got a nice little bit of dollar strength coming into the market right now. A little bit of a mixed bag of goods. You know, we had a lot of volatility the last week and a half. But, you know, we're coming into holiday markets. You know, I mentioned that when we were ending last week is that be careful, especially as you get through the trading week. You know, I mean, we still have some numbers coming up, but we have Monday off for the U.S. markets. And volatility may be there, but volumes always start to get very skittish. It's very pot. There's pockets of volume, not a lot of stuff in the decks, you know. So um, I think you're going to have a little bit of erratic volatility over the next couple sessions for sure. And is that something, Teddy, in the Forex market where, you know, the U.S. will be closed for July 4th, but obviously not a worldwide holiday. Um, mm -hmm. But you see that reflected dramatically in terms of the volumes across the board with, with Forex? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. For sure it does. For sure it does. Because you got to remember that the dollar, the currency market interplays with all kinds of other markets. So as the U.S. market, which is the biggest equity market and the biggest debt market out there, when those are shut down, you know, I mean, that starts to 
have definitely an impact on currency sure. trading, especially with the debt market. Sure. All right. So where do we want to start uh, on our currency wrap up, man, and round up? Where, what are you looking at most, uh, most importantly as you kick things off this week? Uh, well, right now I'm watching gold as it's on the skids right now. I think that's yeah. kind of helping the dollar a little bit. You know, I've been watching the interest rates. That's been a very choppy trade. Remember, we were talking about last Monday's spike high. It's it's very, very interesting what's going on with the, uh, with the uh, interest rate markets as far as helping with the pricing. But what I am looking at is, remember how we always look at as far as where's the flight to quality if there's an event or something like that. You have the U.S. dollar yen right now that's put, uh, on the verge of another breakout pushing resistance. And you have the U.S. dollar Swiss. So it tells me a lot that... As far as where is the strength in the dollar, you know, I was looking at it, you know, as far as where the, with the with the European currencies, how they were reacting last week with the, um, the dollar being a little weak. Now yeah. we're looking at it as far as where do you find the strength? So we're having a breakout to the upside pretty much um, for the Japanese yen looking for a boost. I have a target of 111 half at least. If it gets up into that area, I could see 112 half, 113 pressing, you know, over the next week and a half, two weeks after the holiday i'm not looking for any extreme moves okay. until after next week you know you got to remember quarter end is today we're halfway through the yeah. year you know so i think and i've been saying this in my videos for the past week already um that i think the most of the funds did all their balancing a week or two ago because why not you know that they were at a point sure. where they were pushing extremes on the month and that's another reason why i think you got to be careful with the trading this week because um, these guys aren't doing any actions. You know, remember when we were talking about last Monday's move where the currency market got shaken up and the debt market got shaken up overnight? Those were not algos kicking in and going crazy, you know? And it kind of gets out. I was listening to your last ending segment before I came on about, you know, the one tenth of when things happen. It goes to an old adage from the trading floor never say never because never Oof. always comes in the markets. And as soon as sure you hear does. somebody say, especially retail people saying, this is never going to happen, this will never happen. Well, that's when right away I'm looking and being like, okay, it's about to happen, you know? Right. So, I, hear I mean, I, I hate to, it's, it's not like it's that easy, but it is sometimes almost nope. that easy. You know? I completely so. agree. And not enough people really apply that to just kind of the risk that they're playing with that they might not really apply enough. Um, just like I said, you know, those situations, folks, you run it enough times, you're in this business for long enough. And you're trading every day. It's it's fast. Right. How many times you know the sample size of what you're dealing with grows to the thousands very sure. quickly in that? Yeah. Right. And you're going to see it, right? The longer you're involved in the markets, exactly. eventually you see everything. So, exactly. um, so I'm looking at the U.S. dollar yen once again railing. U.S. dollar Swiss is breaking out to the upside today. You know, so and that's one that I was remember talking the last couple of weeks. Like, is there going to be really strength here, or is it just a knee jerk reaction? Well, now I have them targeting 93 cents, I think, with the momentum that's going on in the market right there, and especially with the euro U.S. dollar on the skids and the pound U.S. dollar. Um, I think that the biggest currency to watch, you know, you know I, you've heard me say before that the best indicator of the markets is the markets. Um, the Australian dollar, which has been on a tear versus the dollar for 16 months up until the last month and a half, I think especially with the news with China that came out over the past two weeks and with how they're treating Australia. And if you look at the Australian versus other crosses, like especially New Zealand dollar, which is like kind of a lot of times in tandem, those two currencies, that's okay. the strong one. Aussie is not. And if you look at Australia versus the pound, the euro and all kinds, and even the dollar, it's starting to form a lot of bearish signs as far as trend it's trending lower you know lower move lows and lower move highs is definitely a bearish trend and i think that that is something that's not going to end you know for a while like i would say that no matter what the dollar does with other currencies i think it's going to hold up versus the australian dollar in the long term over the next six months you know because nice. as china is not buying their raw commodities and they're the biggest buyer of them and then they put they started raising tariffs and putting out of all things, China's putting sanctions on Australia, you know, because Australia is asking a lot of questions about the Wuhan thing and whatever. So <laughs> geopolitically, it's starting to hit them economically, you know, and that does not bode well for Australia. So I think that you're going to see a lot of weakness in that one market. So whether we have dollar strength or weakness versus other ones, I think you're definitely going to see that resounding over the next six months as we pan out into the next two quarters. Um, 
not like with the other currencies. U.S. dollar, Canada, very that's a that's a head scratcher. You know, like we've had a rounded out bottom, we had a nice bounce. The question is, is it sustainable overall? It's in a bear market. It's only in a short term daily bull market. You know, which is more of an upside yeah. correction. And remember, I told you already a couple of weeks ago that the oil trade is off the table right now. Since yes. we don't have any commodity driven thing to give it, you know, and then for some reason, the Biden administration and the Trudeau administration, even coming out of the G7 meeting, you would think that they might have had a little backroom talk saying, hey, maybe. Teddy, hang there for two now. seconds, all right? We're going to take a quick break, okay? I want to okay, finish this sure. up afterwards, all right? We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave. Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today, our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air and water, without them life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps flat right now, trading at 42.82. Don't forget, folks, this week, the 1,000th Gold Report celebration. You can get either Tiger Dollars. We got a special going on. Get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Folks, you can use that for any TFNN newsletter or service. We're celebrating the Gold Report, but get over there, get your Tiger Dollars. And, of course, the Gold Report, we're going up on prices starting next week. Last chance to lock in those current rates. And, of course, you can still cancel with the 30-day money-back guarantee. Check it out the front page of TFNN.com. All right. So, Teddy, finishing up the conversation, man, um, we were talking about the U.S. dollar Canada um, yes. as we were wrapping things up there. Please go ahead. OK, so what's, what's very intriguing to me, actually, is, you know, we came out of the G7 meeting two weeks ago. Everyone's all happy, blah, blah, blah. What I don't get is that the tone between the Biden administration and the Trudeau, you know, 
thing going on and why things aren't hashed out since then. You know, okay. I was I would have thought that after the G7 that we might have started to see some I don't know maybe uptick in our relations. Sure. Um, and of all the, of all the countries in the world besides them just being on our northern border, we don't really have trade conflicts with, yeah. with Canada. You know, um, so but I think that because of what's going on with our oil industry, you know, okay. the attack on that and in the energy industry and a bunch of other things. Um, maybe it's because we'd be, we'd be hypocrites. You can't lean one way and then be pro on the other, you know, especially so close to our, as you know, a neighbor as Canada. Um, sure. But I, I just think that we're, like I said, the dollar, like for instance, where I think the Australian dollar is a dog versus all currencies pretty much for the next six months. U.S. dollar Canada is going to be really, really hard to gauge because it's it is in a bear market. It looks like it's trying to bottom, but I don't really see anything that's really going to pick it up. I think that this is going, we're probably going to be in a limbo period for the next six months. I don't see a really big correction to the upside, meaning dollar strength, and I really don't see a big sell-off either. I think it's going to really become something where it's going to be flatlining into the rest of the year unless we start to resolve some of these issues. So that's going to be a tough trade, anyone that trades to Canada for sure. I got the trend channel up, man, and it's in a downward trend channel, even at the upper boundary, but it is. Teddy, mm -hmm. man, we appreciate the education every week, as always, and uh, you have a great week, and we'll talk to you after the fourth, man. Thanks, Tommy, and you guys have Thanks, a safe Teddy. holiday. Congratulations on the 1,000 week. Thanks so much, man. Take care. Have a great weekend, Teddy. We'll talk to you next week. Stay tuned, folks. We got Basil Chapman. He's coming up next. Live programming all day. We'll be right back. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most.